Hello, my name is Dr. Andrew Way from the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne, Australia. I'm going to be discussing first and second line approaches to the treatment of older patients with acute myeloid leukemia. The next drug I'd like to discuss is mitostorin. Most people will be aware that mitostorin is now approved for patients with FLT3 mutant AML. One question is whether this drug has applicability in patients over the, over the age of 60 because the ratified population only examined patients between the ages of 18 and 60. A study done by the German AML Cooperative Group and presented at the ASH 2016 Congress included patients up to the age of 70 years. In contrast to the RATIFY trial, this study limited uh, analysis to uh, patients who had FLT3 ITD uh, and patients with only FLT3 TKD were not included. The induction was uh, similar to the RATIFY trial except that mitosterone was given uh, on day 8 through to 48 hours before the next cycle of chemotherapy in contrast to the RATIFY trial which only used mitostorin between the days uh, 8 and 21. For consolidation, the German AML Cooperative Group also used an adjusted high-dose ROC uh, dose uh, for patients over the age of 65 and also uh, used mitostorin from day 6 through to, day, uh, through to 48 hours prior to the next cycle of chemotherapy. Furthermore, three cycles of consolidation were given compared to uh, four cycles in the RATIFY trial. Maintenance therapy was also delivered in this study, uh, but different to the RATIFY trial was also incorporated in the post-allograft maintenance phase. Complete remission was achieved in 76% of patients and there was no difference in the response rate uh, in older patients compared to younger patients. The early death rate was 10% uh, in the older subpopulation compared to 4% in the younger subgroup and median overall survival at this stage was uh, similar between older and younger patients. This study demonstrates that mitostorin in combination with intensive chemotherapy can be delivered to older patients and the outcomes at this stage look quite promising. Final analysis of the study is awaited. The next class of drug I'd like to discuss are the BH3 mimetics, which are making dramatic impact in older patients with acute myeloid leukemia. The major flip BH3 mimetic is called venetoclax, and this is a potent and specific inhibitor of pro-survival BCL2. Venetoclax functions by displacing BIM after binding to BCL2, and BIM is a pro-apoptotic uh, molecule which is able to potently induce apoptosis in AML cells. In the venetoclax monotherapy study performed mainly in patients with relapse and refractory AML, response rates were 19%. However, venetoclax in combination with standard of care therapies appears to augment the response in older patients uh, far more than either drugs are given alone. Furthermore, there are numerous combinations now with standard of care therapies which are emerging and showing substantial promise. This slide summarises uh, some of the studies which have been performed in this area where venetoclax has been combined with the hypomethylating agents azacitidine or docitabine, also in combination with low-dose RSC and more recently in combination with a modified intensive care schedule combining five days of cytarabine with two days of idorubicin. You can see that most of these studies have been performed in older patients over the age of uh, 70 and the major differences between the hypomethylating agent and uh, low-dose ROC and 5 plus 2 studies uh, is the high proportion of secondary AML in the uh, ROC containing trials. Furthermore, patients with prior HMA exposure and failure uh, were predominant in patients in the low-dose ROC and 5 plus 2 trials. Across the board, you can see that the combined CR and incomplete CR rate was uh, impressive in all the uh, therapeutic uh, combinations and furthermore the complete responses in patients with de novo AML uh, were particularly impressive and very similar to uh, intensive chemotherapy. Early deaths were also below 10% in all of these studies uh, suggesting that these treatments are effective but also are able to be safely delivered. The question now is whether these treatments can be demonstrated to be superior to standard of care and registration studies are currently underway in many of these areas to demonstrate that. At the European Hematology Congress in uh, June 2018, uh, a combined analysis was done 
of the hypermethylating agent and low-dose ROC studies uh, with respect to clinical outcomes according to molecular subgroup. Some of the interesting trends emerging are that patients with uh, MPM1 mutation seem to have a uh, superior survival to other molecular subgroups, and secondly, that patients with uh, TP53 uh, abnormalities appear to have uh, uh, worse outcomes compared to other groups. This information is important because it will help us to identify patients who uh, may potentially benefit from these venetoclax low-dose chemotherapy combinations, uh, which may be used in preference to chemotherapy, and secondly, where new uh, therapies are uh, required, particularly patients with P53 mutation, in order to further improve outcomes. Lastly, I'd like to just finish by showing a schema for how uh, new patterns of treatment are emerging uh, in patients with uh, acute myeloid leukemia uh, who do not have acute promyelocytic leukemia. Obviously the first clinical decision is to decide whether patients are fit or unfit for intensive chemotherapy. For patients who are fit for intensive chemotherapy, uh, molecular stratification and identification of FLT3 mutation now indicates that mitostorin uh, is the drug of choice uh, to be used in combination with intensive chemotherapy. For patients with therapy-related AML, secondary AML, or AML with myelodysplastic-related changes, uh, CPX351 uh, is a potential option uh, compared to standard intensive chemotherapy. Thirdly, uh, amongst patients uh, who do not have uh, the above two characteristics, the addition of gemtuzumab azogamycin to intensive chemotherapy may deliver some benefits, particularly to patients with a high level of CD33 expression. In the uh, mitostorin trials and also the CPX351 trial, uh, patients who went on to have a stem cell transplant had a particularly uh, good outcome, uh, uh, even compared to those who had a transplant uh, without these new drugs. And so patients who are suitable for a stem cell transplant and who are uh, fit, fit enough should certainly be considered uh, for this post-remission treatment option. In patients unfit for intensive chemotherapy, venetoclax in combination with either hypermethylating agents or low-dose ROC appears to be quite promising, although randomised trials to prove this benefit are still being conducted. Clinical trials should always be the first option uh, if this is available. For patients who fail frontline therapy, uh, the, the standard of care for patients fit enough uh, for further treatment is some form of salvage chemotherapy. However, new treatments are emerging now which uh, may deliver uh, similar or potentially uh, improved benefits and also have a better safety profile and these include uh, inhibitors to target IDH2, IDH1 uh, and even uh, FLT3. So we can see that uh, there are many new therapies which are emerging for older patients with acute myeloid leukaemia and the challenge now will be how to incorporate these new drugs into a model of care. New data is rapidly emerging and this treatment landscape is likely to uh, keep changing uh, in the near future. Many thanks for your attention.